Hey everybody, welcome again to another one of my math videos. In this video I'm going to teach you how to write compound inequalities using interval notation. And there are two types of compound inequalities. There are OR compound inequalities and there's also AND compound inequalities. Um, in this particular video I'm going to show you two OR examples and in my next video, which will be coming shortly, I'm going to show you two AND examples. And the one thing that you have to remember when you see an OR compound inequality is you want to use everything that is shaded. And I wrote it for you in green on the left. When you see an OR compound inequality, you want to use everything that is shaded. And that's going to make a lot more sense once we get started with this example. So here we have x is less than or equal to 3 or x is greater than 7. And the first thing I like to do is to write my number line from negative infinity to positive infinity, which I already did. And the next thing I like to do is to put my two numbers that I solved for, 3 and 7, on the number line. So I'm going to put my two numbers, 3 and my other one, 7, on the number line. And make sure that you always put your smaller number uh, to the left of the bigger number. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph x is less than or equal to 3. Uh, because there is an equal sign and 3 is included in that solution, I'm going to put a closed circle around 3. And because x is less than or equal to 3, I'm going to color in everything to the left of 3. Now I'm going to graph x is greater than 7. Because there is no equal sign underneath the symbol and 7 is not included, I'm going to put an open circle around 7. And because x is greater than 7, I'm going to color in everything to the right. So now we can express our answer in interval notation. And once again, like I said in green, we want to use everything that is shaded. Okay, so if we start from the left and we go to the right, our solution starts at negative infinity. And there's a parenthesis around negative infinity because x can never equal infinity. And it goes all the way up until x equals 3 and there is a bracket around 3 because 3 is part of the solution x can actually equal 3 there's a closed circle and some people actually like to write the word or but I like to use the math symbol which is union union is just another way of writing the word or and for the interval on the right we start at the number 7 7 is not included x cannot equal 7 so we put a parenthesis around it and it goes all the way to positive infinity so now we've expressed our answer in interval notation and I want to show you one more example that's just a little different so here we have x is less than negative 5 or x is less than or equal to 3 and once again, the first thing I want to do is to write my number line from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then I want to put my two points that I solved for, negative 5 and 3 on the number line. Once again, make sure you put the smaller number to the left. Now I'm going to graph x is less than negative 5 because there's no equal sign and negative 5 is not included. I'm going to put an open circle around negative 5. And because x is less than negative 5, I'm going to color in everything to the left. <clears throat> so now I want to graph x is less than or equal to 3. Because there is an equal sign underneath the less than, and 3 is actually included, I'm going to put a closed circle around 3. And because x is less than or equal to 3, I'm going to color in everything to the left. So now I want to express my answer in interval notation. And remember, for a OR inequality, I want to use everything that is shaded. So if we start from the left and we go to the right, we start at negative infinity. And once again, x can never equal negative infinity, so that's why we put a parenthesis around it. And if we start from the left and go to the right, it goes from negative infinity all the way until 3. And because x is actually equal to 3, and there's a closed circle, I'm going to put a bracket. And now we've expressed our answer in interval notation. 
So I hope this video helped you understand interval notation just a little bit better. If you need any extra help with live tutoring or homework solutions, please go to my website at mathmeeting.com. Once again, mathmeeting.com, and I would love to help you out. Also, if you like my style of teaching and you want to see some more of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, or like my Facebook page, uh, whatever you like better. And then you can see my videos as soon as I upload them. Uh, once again, thank you so much for watching, and take care.